We're going to be in Psalm 147 this morning. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 5. Psalm 147, verses 1 through 5. And the Word of God reads, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up, bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them by all, all by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. I want to speak to you today from the title, um, The Need for Healing. The Need for Healing. Amen? Again, verse 3, he healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. The need for healing. When God made the earth, he made it good. For those of us who understand and have read our Bibles, when we look at Genesis, we see that in the creation, God decided that everything he had made, he said everything was good. Amen? Amen. He is a perfect God, and he makes no mistakes. So everything that he made was perfect to him, perfectly good. Then along came sin. And now we, unfortunately, do not experience everything that God intended. We do not experience that perfection. But God also controls the seasons. Amen. There must be, even in this time that we live in now, there must be sunshine. There must be rain. Amen. There are good times and there are bad times. Things will happen and we won't escape some of these events without having some scars. Amen? Now, God could have decided, you know, to allow us to bypass the effects of sins, but he didn't. Instead, God in his sovereignty, he uses what's happening to his benefit. Amen? Amen? Amen. And now everyone on this planet Earth uh, will suffer some pain, which will result in some damage. Amen. And this damage requires healing. And God is so gracious to us that he schedules <laughs> our healing for his glory and our benefit. Amen? Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 3. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 3. Help me, Holy Spirit. The Word of God reads, To everything there is a season, and a time and every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. And I've often thought that this passage um, spoke of what we are experiencing and what we are dealing with or what we are to do. Uh, I've not always looked at this passage in a way to where um, we would see what God is doing and God is controlling. Amen? Uh, and verse 3 says, there's a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up. It, some people, if you were like me, will use this scripture as an excuse um, to allow your anger <laughs> to fester. The time to kill, time to bust a cap in somebody if they, you know, have gotten out of, out of hand. We have some saints in here who believe in that, some saints that own guns, and I know you're here. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but this is really not about capital punishment or God giving a green light, you know, to take somebody out or, you know, justifying self-defense or war. It's really not about that. Solomon is saying that God allows death, time to kill, that death and destruction are unavoidable aspects of life. Hmm. People will die, and others that witness that death, though they are still alive, will need to heal from that loss. Time to kill and time to heal. Very different than how I thought. Amen? There's a time to be born and a time to die. There's a time to kill, but there's also a time to heal and time to rebuild. And God is our healer. Amen? When you get into a car accident, if the car is not what we call totaled out, which means it's, you know, completely gone, can't do anything with it, there's still damage. Amen? Uh, after the car accident, you may have a car that's operational, but it's not fully functional. Amen? And the only way to get it back to its fully functional position or state is to take the car in for repairs. Amen? There must be a time, even for the believer, for that you set aside to repair. Amen? Amen. And just like God allows certain things to happen that we don't want or we would never anticipate happening in our lives, there are damages that, you know, we, we, there, we, we suffer damages because of those things. And God also, even though he allows those times where damages occur, he also schedules, makes time for healing so that he can fix what's broken in us. Amen. Amen. To know God is to know his character. To know his character is to know him as a healer. Amen. The damage that we experience affords us the opportunity as children of God to experience our Heavenly Father as our healer. So we go through things and we have things that happen that cause damage. However, that is an opportunity for us to see our God and experience him as our healer. Amen. Luke 4, 18, just setting it up, says this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is what Jesus read. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Here's a thought. Jesus came to save. He came to preach the gospel to the poor. Jesus is saying that he gives the gospel to those who recognize and are aware of their spiritual poverty, their bankruptcy. So the gospel is preached, and those who are graced by God uh, to receive that gospel, we are humbled by the fact that we have sinned against God, and we become desperate, for a way out of the trouble, the way out of the trouble that we know that we deserve. And Jesus gives the good news that he died for our sins, he gave his life for our sins, and that we cannot earn it. Amen? It is a gift. There's nothing you can do to get right with God except for through Jesus Christ and what he has already done. And this salvation is a gift, and we ought to be grateful for that gift. Amen? Amen? Those who receive salvation are graced with the ability to accept the fact that they need salvation. Amen? But he doesn't stop there. Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is upon him, and he sent him to heal the brokenhearted. Mm. This brings the gift of healing into play. Be just because you're saved doesn't mean that you're fixed. Just 
because you're saved doesn't mean that everything in you is all right. Uh, there's this misunderstanding that when we come to God, uh, everything goes right and we don't deal with situations and we don't deal with any damage. Uh, no, Jesus came knowing that we were going to need healing. Amen? There's a lot of broken saints sitting up in church. Amen. Not dealing with the fact that they need to be healed. Uh, I don't know about you, but there have been some things in my life, some things that have happened that I wasn't ready for. Things that I thought I could handle that I found that I couldn't. <laughs> Amen. Things that broke me down to the point to where, you know, I was not functioning at full capacity. Amen. But we serve a God who will not leave us there. We serve a God who sees that situation, knows our hurt, knows our issues, amen, and he's come to schedule our healing, amen? So here's the question. Those of us who have salvation receive salvation because we recognize that we need salvation. Those of us who are in need of healing do we even know that we need healing? Are we pretending that we don't need healing? Is it just, but here, it's just me, but I personally believe that in order to receive your healing, you're going to actually have to be aware of the fact that you need to be healed. Amen? Otherwise, we'll be too proud to do anything about it. We'll be too proud to reach out. We'll be too proud to pray and say, Lord, I'm broken. I need healing. Amen? All right, back to our passage of Scripture. Believe it or not, all that was just set up. Psalm 147, 1 through 5. Psalm 147, 1 through 5. Help me, Lord. The Word of God says, Praise ye the Lord, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, for it's good to sing praises Unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. It's right to praise the Lord. It's good for us to praise the Lord. It is, it is proper, amen, for us to praise the Lord. Praise looks good on you because that's what we're here to do. We are here to give God praise. Why? Because God is good. Amen. God is merciful. God extends his kindness, his gentleness, his faithfulness to those he loves. And he is to be praised simply because of the fact, because God is good, but he gives that mercy and that kindness to folks who are not good. Amen. So the deal is, is we praise God simply out of the fact that we don't deserve this goodness. And this kindness that he constantly extends to us. I don't know about you, but if I don't have something and I'm in need of something and somebody gives me something, even though I don't deserve that something, I'm going to praise him. Are you hearing me? Because God has been that good. He's been that merciful. He's been that kind. He extends faithfulness and love to those who do not properly love him back. My goodness. Amen. So the least we could do is praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Verse 2. Why are we praising God? Because the Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcast of Israel. This is mind-boggling because in context, what we're talking about here, the context of the scripture is saying that Israel is all over the place. They're broken up. They're scattered. Why are they scattered? They're scattered because they messed up. They blew it. Amen. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He rebuilt Jerusalem and is rebuilding Jerusalem here in this, in this context here, not because of some unfortunate disaster, not because there was an earthquake or a tsunami, no, they're being rebuilt because there was rebellion. Amen? They sinned against a holy God, and there were consequences. 
They messed up, so now they are dealing with the damages and in need of repair. Amen. Some of our choices cause damage. Amen. And now we need to be healed. Amen. And then verse 3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. The amazing thing here is that God sees all this rebellion from Jerusalem and Israel and all the damages, and in spite of all the wrongdoing, he comes in because he's loving and faithful, and he rebuilds, he heals. Amen. This is God doing his healing work on people who have rebelled against him. Not giving you what you deserve, not leaving you where you deserve to be left at, but because of his kindness and his mercy and his love for his children, knowing good and well we don't deserve it, he heals us anyway. My goodness. Our God is a healer. There's a need for healing. Why? Because, yeah, I blew it. I blew it. I messed up. Amen. Verse 4. He telleth the number of the stars. Now, this seems like it's just out of context. It's like, wait, we're talking about, you know, we need to praise the Lord, and there needs to be singing unto the Lord, and, and the Lord is rebuilding and gathering those who have been scattered, and then he heals the brokenhearted and, and binds up their wounds, and then he says he telleth the number of the stars. It seems like it's completely out of context. Like, why, why, why don't we start talking about the stars? You know? He called them all by their names. Wow. Let me set this up. I got this from uh, this, I guess his name is, what is his name? Archibald. That's an interesting name. <laughs> Archibald Brown. And he says this. The way in which the tender compassion of the Lord is placed beside his infinite knowledge in verses 3 and 4 Exclaim causes him to exclaim. He says, oh, Holy Spirit, with lowly reverence, we venture yet to say that thou hast never collected and put side by side two more exquisite statements than these. He healeth the broken heart, and he knoweth the number of the stars and their names. He's basically saying this, saints. With his healing hand, God has his hand on the broken heart, and God at the same time has his hand on the stars. God is not so far away and so distant that he can't hold the stars together and heal your broken heart at the same time. Woo! He calleth them by name, by their own names. He knows all of them by name. He knows every single star. Yet he has the ability to keep track of all of that and keep all the details of my broken heart at the same time. He knows the name of the stars. He knows all my issues. He knows all my hurts. He knows all my pains. He's not so far away that he can't deal with me. Verse 5 says, great is the Lord's power, great is the Lord, and of his great power and his understanding is infinite. He's powerful, he's all-knowing, he's everywhere at the same time. You know, he's got one hand on the stars, and he holds the stars where they don't fall out the sky. And another hand, in that great hand that's holding the stars together, and he's got another gentle hand reaching into my heart, performing surgery on me. Yeah. Delicate surgery to the point to where I'm like, you know what? I can do this and I can do this at the same time. My God. That's the kind of God we serve, saints. He knows everything we've been through. He knows you need to be fixed. He knows exactly when to start and schedule an operation. He has perfect timing. He's the perfect surgeon. He specializes in healing. Healing the brokenhearted. And he can do all that and keep the stars in the sky at the same time. It says in, I believe, Colossians, the first chapter, 
In him all things consist. Jesus is holding things together. He's holding it all together. And the truth is, is he's been holding me and you together. <laughs> all these years, hasn't he? Huh? All these years. Isaiah 57, 15. Isaiah 57, 15. Just a few more scriptures and I'm going to be out of your way. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth in eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place whew, with him also that is of a contrite heart and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. God is everywhere. God is not so far away in the heavenlies that he cannot deal with my broken heart. Amen? Amen. Those who are humble, those who recognize, Lord, this is big. I'm a little bit messed up here. I can't hold it together all the time. I can't keep it together. There are some things we go through that causes us to be humble. And in those times, we can tend to think that God is so far away. But the truth is, is no, no. I dwell in the heavenlies, but I also dwell with those who are humble, who are going through, who are broken. Amen? Amen. I can deal with all of that. So when you feel like he's not working, he is. <laughs> when you think that he's not on the case, he is. Amen. I may not feel like he's making any changes. Oh, but he is. When is God not working? When is God not healing? When is God not saving? When is God not sanctifying? When is God not lifting you up? Amen? Amen. When I think that he's changed his mind, he hasn't. When I think that he's forgotten about me, he hasn't. Amen? When I think he took a break, he didn't. <laughs> God is working on you right now. Every chapter, every page of your book, he knows it all from the beginning to the end and every line all the way through. He's written it all out for you. Amen? He's concerned about every detail, every pain, every hurt, every issue. He's working. Amen? Word of God says in verse 2, go back to 147 and 2 one more time and I'm going to close this up. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. That word build is really rebuilt. As I said before, if we look at it again, it's really he's rebuilding because some of the things that we have done, saints, if we're honest, it caused damage in our life. Amen. There are areas of our emotions uh, where we are hurt and damaged, not because of some in unfortunate incident, it's because of some of our choices. We rebelled against God, and we, God told us not to go. He said, don't go. And we went anyways. God said, come out from among them, and we made them our road dogs. Come on, somebody. God said, be quiet, shut up, don't say nothing. We said it anyway, and we've ruined relationships. Come on, somebody. God said, forgive, love, and stop being so selfish. But we couldn't keep our mind off our own stuff and our own little situation to where we damaged relationships. For a lot of us, we have a need to be healed because we rebelled against God. 
So I don't know for certain exactly how God operates and how he does every little thing he does. That's his territory. But the truth is, is following God and obeying God, doing what God said, is the first step in our emotional healing. He's the one who restores our souls. Returning to God and doing what he says is the very first step in our healing. We partner with God, not just, not just watch God, we partner with God, and when we turn back to God, that's when the healing begins, saints. What he does before that, I can't see. That's just, you know, the secret things belong to the Lord. I can't. Figure all that out. But what I can see clearly in my Bible is when we return. When we say, okay, I've had enough. I can't take it. Some of this is because of me. <laughs> you got everybody who want to blame everybody else. No, look in the mirror. Look at the last few decades and just go ahead and say, you know what? If I had to be totally honest and God knows Stop fronting. Some of this is my choice. He said no, and I just went right on ahead. Amen? So following God is, the, some of the, is one of the first steps to our emotional healing. Write this word down. One of the things that we can do, and God calls us to do, is meditate. Amen? Meditate. Right? And I'm not talking about yoga. Meditating on what's true. Meditating on the only source of truth. Meditating on the word of God. Okay? Meditating on the Bible. God's instructions are life to us. Amen. Proverbs 4, 20 and 22. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. Uh, just change. Yeah, thank you. Good, good translation. Um, my child, pay attention to what I say. <laughs> Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, for they bring life to those who find them and the healing, there it is, to their whole body. This is Solomon talking to his son saying, Listen, dude, don't let go of my words. Keep my words. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to give you some game. Okay? Solomon's talking to his son. Guess what? God is talking to his children. Amen? Amen? My child, pay attention to what I say. You know, I, there's some things I tried in the early decades. Why? Could, not because I didn't hear what God said. I just didn't take him seriously. Yeah. Right? I didn't pay attention. And guess what happens when you don't pay attention and take God's word seriously? Damage. Somebody's shaking their head back there going, yep. You're looking back when you was a soul train dancer. <laughs> and you're going, oh, God. Why didn't I pay more attention? Why didn't I do what you said? <laughs> Amen? This is God talking to his children. Amen. A person whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates in the law day and night, Psalm one and two, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, huh? nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That man is blessed. Amen. The word will keep you. The word will inform you on what to do and what not to do. Uh-huh. The word will tell you what to cling to and what to let go of, what to stay away from. Come on, somebody. It also tells you when you're off track. Amen. So I can what? Return to my healer. Amen. These are just simple things. Next thing. The word also will tell you to confess your sins. Amen. Name them specifically. You know, I may not, you know, I may be in a prayer call with somebody and be like, you know, let's, let's pray. And I say, Lord, forgive me my sins. S. Then I go in my prayer closet and I say, now what I was saying <laughs> is, is X, Y, Z, 1, 2, 3, Q, R, S, all of that. These are the personal things 
I was embarrassed to say it on the prayer line. There was too many people on the call. But, <laughs> but this is what I'm talking about. Lord, you already know I'm going to confess those things before you. Amen. Amen. You know, 1 John 1 and 9. You know, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. All right, just simple. Okay, meditate on the word. The word causes you to know where you're off track. Amen. The word will cause you and tell you, listen, you need to confess this stuff. This now that you know, confess it to God. Let's bring it out in the open. All right? That's two. Then number three, take control of your thoughts. The healing that we need requires that we take control of what we're thinking. Better yet, let the Holy Spirit take control <laughs> of what you're thinking. Amen. In the spirit, we are to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Amen? Everything, every, ex everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We got philosophy and things that we hear from everybody else that says, well, this will fix you, this will fix you, this will fix you, this will help you. If you do this, this will do that. Everybody's super smart. And some of this stuff is not working. Amen? He's saying, go back to the word of God. Ask, it, ask the Lord, does that agree with what I'm saying? Is that what Jesus is saying? Amen? And then we take, you know, control of our thoughts, the things that we think about on a daily basis. You know, Philippians 4, 8 through 9. Philippians 4, 8 through 9. And now, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is, what is admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Putting into practice all that you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. I was reading um, some devotion. I have a couple of devotions I use. And somebody was saying, you know, if I busy myself with holy things. If I busy my mind with what God wants me to be focused on. Then there's a good chance I will not find the time to get into the other things. Are you hearing me? If I take my mind off of, of, of me and what I'm thinking, maybe I can go bless somebody else. That's a holy thing to be doing. You know, don't just think about yourself. That's when you start getting into trouble. I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. Before you know it, you are way off, off track. God, what do you want me to do today? What do you want me to think about today? How, what is my day supposed to look like today? What if, you know, I was thinking, Jamie, you wouldn't be tripping off you today. I was thinking you go help somebody. What? I was thinking you show some love. I'm thinking you go down and spend some more time with your kids. Are you hearing me? I was thinking you call that church member you ain't seen in a minute. Holy things. Before you know it, your day is gone. What you do? I just served Jesus all day. I just got, oh, I was busy. I was just busy being holy. Isn't that interesting? What a concept. Huh? What is this? This is healing. What is he doing? He's putting us back on track. <laughs> Getting us off of where we were and what we, our selfish motives, our selfish ideas, our, our thoughts that can, can turn carnal in a moment's notice. So what he's doing is he's redirecting us. I made you. I saved you. I have a purpose for your life. And the purpose that I have for you, Jamie, is not you fulfilling every desire and all kinds of things that you want. You getting all the attention. You getting all the praise. You getting all the glory. You getting all the whatever it is. You... No. That's not it. So I don't know exactly what the Lord does to operate on us. But there are some things that we do to partner with him. Some very practical things that we do. And if we stay consistent in those things, we will be on our way to our healing. Because I can't, I tell you, I, I, there's some things that the Lord has done in me. I don't even know how he did it. I just, you know, I was into something or messed up on something or couldn't get over something. And the Lord just, one day I looked back and was like, whoa, I'm over it. I don't know what he did. But what I'm talking about is what we do. There's some very practical things that we do. Amen. Emotional healing is a process. It involves 
moment by moment choices to trust and obey the Lord with what he's told us to do. So here's the thing, and I'm almost done. Help me, Lord, say this right. I got a baby named Grace, and she's old enough for me to talk about her and not be mad just yet. There's a cutoff at six or seven, and you can't do it anymore at the past. <laughs> I love baby Grace. She's around four years old, and every now and then she tries things. And the things that she tries, they don't always, they don't always work out. Okay? Um, she has probably at least four accidents of some type a day where something went wrong and she comes crying to me about something. Some of this is due to just her being four and trying to figure out how to walk and not, you know, get on things. And there are some other things where, like, you know, I told you, sweetie, that chairs are for sitting, not dancing. If you dance on a chair, you're going to get hurt, you know? <laughs> so some of it is rebellion. Some of it is what she heard me say, and she fell and hurt herself. And now she's coming crying, amen, to her daddy. Now I'm the only parent in the house. There's only me now. So I'm getting a crash course in being strong, providing daddy, and nurturing daddy at the same time. I'm it, amen? So I take care of laundry. I put food on the table. I, do, I drive the kids to all their appointments and everything I got to do, you know, and still, in spite of all that high and lofty stuff that I got to do, I have to also have my ear to baby Grace. So I can't just be way up here dealing with what is most important and not take the time out to hear baby Grace. Amen? She knows that I have all these other things to do, but she also needs to know from her daddy everything's going to be all right. And when she falls and hurts herself, a lot of times it's just about her coming to me. Right? I just want to, I want to hear you say, Daddy, I'm going to be okay. Oh, what did you hurt yourself? Let me kiss Daddy. Oh, is this what it is? Oh, look at that. That's terrible. Oh, baby Grace. And I say those little things, and she smiles, and she gets better, and then she's off running and doing her thing again. And I'm praying that she remembers what I said. <laughs> but I reassure her. I comfort her. I put band-aids on the wounds. Amen? Because some of those things she tried to do didn't work out. And it caused some damage. But that's all right because she has a father who's never too busy, who's never too far away, she has a father that loves her who can step off of whatever he's doing and come see about her need. In church, we have the same father who's 10 times better than any father we've ever known. He's taking care of the whole planet, but he's not too busy to see about what we need. Because some of the things we tried didn't work out. Some things happened to us, and some things were our own choices. But regardless of that, he is the God who heals us and loves us and schedules our healing. So I will say this and I'm going to close and I'm done. Your pastor is dealing with a lot right now. I don't feel like I'm running at optimum level. Some things have happened and there has been some damage. And I say this to you not to feel sorry for me, but I say this to you that you pray for me as I heal. Amen? I also say this because I have no choice because God has not released me. I have to still pastor. Amen? And I need to do that not feeling like I have to get up here and look like I don't need repairs. Okay? I, not with the pressure of delivering the best sermon that I can every single week. Amen? When truthfully, I'm hurting inside. Trying to do the best that I can, but I'm not 100%. And I know it. And now, 
You know it. Maybe some can tell. But the truth is, is it, we all lost somebody. I lost Sonny. The kids lost their mother. The church lost Sister Pastor. Amen? And there's a host of other things that I've lost. And you know, there ain't too many Hawkins left. I got a whole new breed of them, but we just lost a, a slew of them. And I'm still dealing with that. Okay? So here's the truth. I need to be able to say this to you because I need to come up here and pastor and preach and counsel and be there for you while you understand that I don't need the pressure. And it's not pressure that's coming from you. It's pressure that comes from me. I don't feel like anybody in here is pressuring me. But I feel the pressure myself. Anybody understand that? You know, is that okay with you if I'm just purely honest with you? Do I have permission to heal in front of you? Amen. And that may mean that I might come in here one Sunday and be like, you know what? I ain't got it. But the Holy Spirit is here. And if all we can do is pray, and so I feel you, Pastor Rick. You know, sometimes we got to get quiet and see what the Holy Spirit wants to do with his church. Amen. Is that okay? But I know I'm not alone in this. I know that several of you are hurting too. And I want to tell you it's okay to not be at 100%. You don't have to be on it right now. There has been damage from various things that you've gone through. Give yourself permission to take the pressure off yourself and go to God and say, Lord, I need some repair. Yeah. Amen? Does anybody else feel that? Is it just me? Can you do me a favor? We're going to come down here. Pastor, come on. And if you're like me and you recognize you have some repair jobs <laughs> that's been, you know, that you're waiting on the Lord to do, you come down here and pray with me. Some losses. So come on. Is it just me? I don't think it's just me. We've been through some things, huh? But our God is a healer. Our God is a healer. We're not going to just pretend like that it didn't happen. God doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to get healed.